Minister Anand, I'm Rob Kittredge, counsel for uh, the Justice Centre for Constitutional Freedoms, and we share standing at these hearings with the Democracy Fund and Citizens for Freedom. I take it you'd agree with me that the public order emergency declaration earlier this year did not meet the requirements for such a declaration set out in the Emergencies Act, wouldn't you? I do not agree with that. Um, and uh, I guess I'd like to start out with uh, a bit of a chat about the principle of uh, cabinet solidarity. As Minister of National Defense, you're a member of Cabinet and uh, the Privy Council, right? I am. And on November, in it, somewhere around November of 2019, when you were sworn in, you took the oath of the members of the Privy Council, right? I did. And can we pull that up? It's uh, P-O-E-J-C-F-1. I have the oath in front of me if you want to pursue <laughs> Okay, perfect. Uh, and uh, all of the cabinet ministers uh, appearing before this commission took the same oath, right? I assume. And I was pretty nervous that day. I was focused on what I was going to try to say. I'm sure. And uh, the prime minister takes that oath as well, right? I assume. You swore to speak your mind and express your opinions on issues before cabinet freely and fully in private meetings, debates, and conversations with your cabinet colleagues, right? Yes, and I also committed to ensure that those shall be secretly treated of in council, and I would do so as a faithful and true servant ought to do for now his majesty. Right, and that that uh, the principle of cabinet confidence is in there, where your your oath to secrecy and or you're swearing yourself to secrecy in there. That's the principle of cabinet confidence, right? The principle is based on the idea that a full fledged discussion can only occur if those matters are kept confidential. The rationale is important to remember. Right, um, and you're anticipating some of my questions here, and. Uh, the next one, certainly, because, uh, and that's because once cabinet policy is presented to the public, those, that policy is the agreed collective decision of all members of the cabinet, right? The executive branch of government in a democracy. Right. In fact, from a constitutional perspective, cabinet de decisions are in effect your decisions, aren't they? Our collective decisions as the executive branch of government in a par parliamentary democracy, yes. And you, you wouldn't say they're your decisions, but you're certainly party to the decision. They are collective decisions. All right. Um, the invocation of the Emergencies Act this year was a cabinet decision, wasn't it? Yes, it was. So it was a collective decision that was in part your decision. Of the executive branch of government. Right. And you can't publicly repudiate or criticize it, can you? The importance of the declaration of a public order emergency is one with which I agree, one I support, given the circumstances of the time, the inability of children to go to school, the inability of people to go to work, the inability of trade to cross the border, the inability of citizens to live peacefully in certain parts of our country, the buildup of arms in uh, certain areas, uh, certainly the threats that were present led me to the conclusion that this was the right approach for our government. Right, but if you felt differently, you couldn't repudiate or criticize the decision unless you stepped down from your post as minister. That is a hypothetical that I do not need to respond to, given that I agreed with the decision and I agree with the principle embedded in our parliamentary democracy that the executive branch of government makes decisions collectively. The government has waived certain aspects of cabinet confidence with regard to these proceedings. For example, as you know, some records have been produced that could have been withheld on cabinet confidence grounds. This has been a partial selective waiver and cabinet confidence has been used to keep some evidence from being put before the commission. But there hasn't been any waiver of cabinet solidarity, has there? I believe that we are all committed to our oath and we will make decisions, as I said, on a collective basis. Uh, we've done that to date, and we will continue to do that. That is foundational to the way in which decisions are made in this country as part of our parliamentary democracy. 
I asked you at the outset whether you agreed that the public order emergency declaration earlier this year did not meet the requirements for such a declaration as set out in the Emergencies Act, and you disagreed. If you had agreed with me, you would have to resign your cabinet post, wouldn't you? I, again, it's a hypothetical. I am not going to respond to it. I will say the definition of public order emergency being an emergency that arises from threats to the security of Canada and that is so serious as to be a national emergency was one that I strongly believed was met, and I am quoting from the Act itself. Do you understand the principle of cabinet solidarity? I understand the oath that I took, and I understand the principles on which our parliamentary democracy are based, right. and one of those principles is that the executive branch of government makes decisions collectively. Right, and that if you disagree or repudiate those decisions, you have to resign your position as a cabinet minister, right? I am not aware of that principle, and I, I think that it is not relevant at this time. Uh, I'm, so you're saying that you don't understand uh, that cabinet ministers cannot uh, repudiate the decisions of cabinet without resigning their post as cabinet minister. I'm saying that I understand the way in which parliamentary democracy works and the executive and legislative branches of government and their respective functions. And in this case, in all cases in which I've been involved, that decision-making process is functioning robustly. I can respect the uh, the response, I guess, but uh, you. Uh, so, are you saying that you are free to criticize and repudiate the decisions of cabinet without resigning your post? I will continue to reiterate the point that at all times we are able to have a full and robust discussion to satisfy ourselves that decisions that we are making are in the best interests of our country, as was the case in the public order emergency. At all times in private cabinet meetings, you're free to express yourself. But in public, if you repudiate or uh, disagree with the decisions of cabinet, you're not allowed to, to say that publicly, are you? Again, I don't find this line of questioning relevant to the case at hand. I fully support the public order emergency and the situation that was gripping our country was dire and it was extremely important for our government to take steps after three weeks of uh, protests where existing law enforcement had not been able to effectively respond to them. Right. Well, I find it relevant, and I see no objections from my friends. Well, I think you've got. I think you've got your answer, and All right. I think you've gone about as far as you can on this. Fair enough. And, and, and we were getting dangerously close. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, at any point, uh, well, I've read your interview summary and listened to your testimony today, uh, and until we started talking about this, there there wasn't any clear. Uh, statement in support of the invocation of the Emergencies Act. At any point since February 5th, 14th, have you considered resigning your post as Minister of National Defense? I most definitely have not. All right. Um, I'd like to show you a document. Can we please pull up ssm.can.7851rel1? So this is a text message exchange that came up earlier today between Minister Lametti and Minister Mendicino, in which they discussed making a request to you for tanks to be deployed, deployed in Ottawa. Minister Mendicino asks, how many tanks? Oh, maybe that's not it. Do you need the number again? It's, it's coming up. Oh, there we go. Um, Just go, go slowly when you're reading, please. Sure, sure. Minister Mendicino asks how many tanks Minister Lametti would like deployed, and Minister Lametti reckons that just one will do. Do you agree with Minister Lametti that one tank would have been sufficient to deal with the Canadians who had gathered in Ottawa to express their grievances about government policy? Two points. First, I believe Minister Lametti has mentioned that that was made in jest. Second, I have already provided my comments relating to the fact that the Canadian Armed Forces is the force of last resort. Therefore, we were not considering deploying tanks in any number. Could we scroll up to the top of this? So can you read the date at the top of this message exchange? 
Me? Can you can you read it aloud sure. for us, please? Uh, you need to get the police to move and. No, I'm sorry, not the full text. I won't put you through that. I just meant the date at the very top. Uh, Wednesday, February second, eight oh nine p.m. Right, um, and uh, Minister Lametti earlier on in testimony to this commission wrote the exchange off as a joke between friends. Do you think this is a joke? I, I take no part of my role as Minister of National Defense uh, as something in jest, obviously. I am very concerned and was very concerned, not only about the situation in Canada, but about the global strategic situation that we all find ourselves in. And so I am uh, very concerned to make sure that we are uh, making decisions uh, with full information. And I know that's the case with Minister Lametti as well as uh, the other colleagues around the table. This was a very uh, difficult time and we were all doing our very best in our respective portfolios. Right, um, but at the same time, on February 2nd, just a few days after the arrival of the protesters in Ottawa, this was the sort of joke that was considered funny among your cabinet colleagues, wasn't it? I was actually not in Canada at the time. I was in Europe as previously uh, indicated trying to launch Canada's response uh, to a potential further invasion of Ukraine by Russia. I will say that I know that my colleagues take their work extremely seriously. Does cabinet uh, solidarity require you to find this joke funny? I'm sorry, that was a little frivolous. Um, so just one final uh, set of a couple of questions. After Minister Lametti wrote this off as a joke, he changed the subject and he, he went, moved on to talking about how bringing in the uh, CAF was a last resort, even more so than the Emergencies Act, which he characterized as a second last resort. <clears throat> but that's not precisely accurate, uh, is it? Do you mean... Minister Lametti's statement or the content of his statement? That the Emergencies Act is, uh, I'm sorry, that bringing in the CAF is the last resort and the Emergencies Act is the second last resort. I think that is accurate. Well, the Emergencies Act requires that an emergency be such that it can't be effectively dealt with under any other law of Canada. Would you agree with that? Are you reading from a particular statutory section of the Emergencies Act? I, I can show it to you if you'd like. I have it here. Okay, it's section three. It's the, the, the end bit of section three. So the statute is a legal instrument and the reference here is any other law of Canada. All right, thank you. The National Defense Act is a law of Canada, wouldn't you agree? Those section, are my questions. Section 273 points to any other method of addressing law enforcement other than with the assistance of the CAF. So one deals with a statutory instrument and instruments that are available to address a particular situation, and the other deals with instances in which the CAF can be deployed. Nonetheless, the Emergencies Act, as a precondition, requires that a matter can't be dealt with under any other law of Canada. And I'm asking you, the National Defence Act is a law of Canada, isn't it? The National Defence Act is a statute with a section that specifies that the Canadian Armed Forces will only be deployed if there is no other means of addressing a particular situation from a law enforcement perspective. And that Those two items are different. One deals with the activities of the Canadian Armed Forces. One deals with a potential basket of laws wherein the public emergency is the last item from a legal perspective of any other statute. But would you agree that uh, the National Defence Act is a statute of Canada, a Canadian statute? Of course I would. And so you would agree that the National Defence Act is a law of Canada? I believe you're splitting hairs now well. and you're misconceiving the point that I am making. The point that I am making is that the Emergencies Act is a, a legislative mechanism of last resort Yes. 
The National Defense Act in Section 273 simply says that the Canadian Armed Forces cannot supersede other law enforcement mechanisms right. unless so, there is no other option for law enforcement. Right. Just as one final question to kind of clarify my understanding of your testimony here, are you telling me that the National Defense Act is not a law of Canada? I believe I've already answered that question. All right. Thank you very much. Have a great day.